Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining us. I have Barbara Friedberg, CEO of Robo Advisors Pros, on the show with me today. Thanks for being here, Barbara. It is my pleasure. It's so nice to see you again, Michael. I love reading the articles. Thanks for putting them on the, on the website. Um, you wanted to talk about robo advisory industry and how it offers investment management for all of the newbies to advanced investors, right? That is right. Yeah, I absolutely love this industry for investors because most people aren't like you and me, Michael, that really dig doing the investing stuff. Most people want to get it done for them cheaply, get a good uh, investment portfolio set up, and then get on with their lives. And the robos can do that for them. Got it. Now, some have failed and some, some have succeeded. I wanted to get your insight on that and the hedge will belly up. Yeah, I was really taken aback by that because Hedgeable was a a niche robo-advisor. They got into a lot of active trading. They got into niche markets. They weren't the typical ETF investor platform. And they've been around since 2009. So they're older. But they just could not gain traction. And because they just couldn't get enough assets under management, which is the key to making money, they closed to investors, and I think they're going to go close to retail investors, and I think they're going to go in a different direction now. All right. What about some of the ones that are succeeding? Well, the top robo-advisors by AUM, Assets Under Management, which actually on robo-advisor pros, I did just write an article about those, happened to be in reverse chronological order, if my memory holds, are Personal Capital, Wealthfront, Betterment, Schwab, and Vanguard. So you'll notice at the top, you've got three independent robos, and at the bottom, which are actually the greatest assets under management, you've got two robos which are affiliated with big investment houses. Why do you suspect the ones that are succeeding are succeeding? Uh, there's, that, got, there's got to be a different, if, if some of them are failing and some of them are succeeding, they're not humans. There's got to be some algorithm or some way that they're doing what they're doing that's making it making the winny, winning um, combination, the winning algorithm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think first and foremost, the robo-advisors that are hooked up with a big investment management house. Okay. Vanguard, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Merrill Lynch, Merrill Edge just came out with a huge suite of digital management. It's easy for them because they've already got the clients. They don't have to go through spending a thousand bucks per client to get someone to come to their platform. All they have to do is go to their existing clientele and say, hey, I got another product for you and I think it might fit. So they have such a leg up. Now, the three that are independent, which are Personal Capital, Wealthfront, and Betterment, all three started out in about 2008, 2009, and they differentiated themselves. So I think they have an advantage being that they are early adopters, and they each of them have really good products that fit a particular niche. Got it. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else you want to bring up before we close out on today's update with you? On the robo-advisors, I'd just say just if you're looking for some investment help, some investment management help, you don't want to do it all yourself. And you don't want to pay, you know, one plus percent fees for a, a manager. Check out robo-advisors. Now, many of them do have access to human financial advisors as well, but they're priced really competitively. And I've got a whole lot of information on robo-advisor pros. Got it. All right, Barbara, thanks for joining us today. Wonderful. My pleasure. All right, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be back with more great content just for you.